it was a tough time for a lot of us making that album and we made it through and um, still play some of those songs to this day, you know? I mean, the song that was written 26 years ago that we go out and play every night and people jump around and sing along to, um, that's something of an accomplishment, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hello, gentlemen. Lovely to see you. How are you doing? Oh, hi, James. Hi, guys. It's lovely to see you. Really, you know, appreciate your time on this. And uh, lovely setup, by the way. Is this the rehearsal room you're in by any chance? It is the rehearsal room. We're in very, right very now. nicely done. Yep. Yeah, no, lovely little setup there. Uh, well, let's get into it. I mean, Studio 666, I think here's the first point I want to make. A lot of fans like myself, we expected a comedy from you guys because we've seen the music videos over the years. We know about your sense of humor. Wasn't quite expecting the huge amount of horror elements that are, that are within this. You guys are clearly big fans of the horror genre, right? What kind of inspired the, the extra goriness that's definitely in this film? You know, I wouldn't call us horror aficionados, but we do have an appreciation for the genre and have since we were young lads. I think the biggest inspiration behind the amount of blood and gore is uh, Tony Gardner, the person that did the special effects, because <clears throat> he's kind of a legend in Hollywood horror. Um, you know, he invented like Bride of Chucky and he's made tons and tons of disgusting horror films and zombie films and stuff. So, and we, he actually, he did, he worked with us on our, on our video for a song called Run where he did the prosthetics, where he made us look like old dudes. Yeah. And he really is such a sweet guy. I mean, he's like this nerdy, little, meek, genuinely wonderful dude that has such a twisted fucking imagination. He's super off on, he's yeah, sick. decapitation. Yeah, <laughs> and he gets really into it. So I think that, um, I and mean, look, if you're gonna make a horror film, um, you might as well just take it there. You know, oh, you've, yeah, you've got to go all out. Come yeah, on, we I mean, were going to make some psychological thriller. It was like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, lots of tension and single piano notes. No, we yeah. don't want that. We want the blood and gore and we want the guitars, man, for sure. Yeah. Um, and tell me, I guess, a bit about getting that involved in terms of the acting side. You know, Dave, of course, we've seen you have cameos in a few things over the years. And like I say, you've both done all these music videos that did have a lot of acting elements within them. But this is another level, isn't it? This is a full on motion picture. How was your, what was, what was the actor's process behind? this uh, particular film gentlemen how'd you get into the character like that oh well, the funny thing about it is everybody kind of had a different take on how to do the acting thing you know like one guy took acting lessons uh one guy came in and refused to read the script and just, yeah. <laughs> just made it up on the goddamn spot and so it was just like everybody had their own kind of like take on how we're gonna do it there was no like coaching no real i mean bj the director was great in helping but there wasn't a lot like a tremendous amount of hand holding it's just like here you go make it try to make it happen yeah that makes sense hey hey it comes out well it definitely makes sense that listen the expectations like were really low too. We had that. <laughs> so we weren't you know we weren't going for tom hanks and castaway it was like okay good. yeah would have been would have been a contrast to be fair if you had no absolutely and it's no it's it's nice to see as well obviously you've got the music elements tied into this film as well i'm curious how you kind of approach that because it is, it's a soundtrack, but it's not, isn't it? Like this could be, you know, you guys have dabbled in the kind of heavier end of what you guys do before, and you've definitely had metal side projects and all these kind of things going on as well. Um, what was it like, I suppose, trying to find the right tones, the right style of songs to actually fit this story in, and fit the film as well as being something you can listen to on the album when it comes? Well, you know, the funny thing is that house in the film is where we made our latest record, Medicine at Midnight. And Medicine at Midnight is kind of our most like Saturday night party anthem album we've ever made. You know, that was the intention for that album was, hey, let's make this really fun, sort of light, almost danceable album. And we've never done that before. Let's kind of move over into this, you know, sunny territory. And then we make a fucking horror movie right afterwards. And so <laughs> the music that we had been making in that house didn't necessarily mirror the music that was necessary for the film. So most of the stuff is just like this metal, these metal riffs that I had written and banked in my, at my home studio um, because, you know, it had to have a like darker sort of more um, sinister vibe to it. So, um, 
yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't like your usual cheery Foo Fighters <laughs> festival. That would have been funny if we tried to get like medicine at midnight in there or something. Like I know that. Just, there like, was talk of that odd bedfellows. Like, so, like oh. the first fucking trailer that they made, they used our song "Love Dies Young." Did you ever see that? <laughs> it was like we know, it made no sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, that would definitely be a nice little contrast. I'm glad you mentioned Medicine at Midnight, though, because I absolutely adored that record, guys. And and it's exactly what you said, which was it was very danceable and in a way that I perhaps hadn't heard you guys do before. You really pushed that side of it. It was very, very kind of big and danceable. I wonder now that that's a little bit in the rearview mirror for you. What were the learning points from that? You know, clearly you've done something completely different to follow it up immediately. But is there anything you can take from the making of that record that I know you guys admire so much as well that is going to push you forward into whatever's next? It's like been two years since we started making that record. A lot happened in the last two it's years. So crazy, yeah. The yeah. album and movie we started making before the pandemic. And then of sure. course everything shut down in March of 2020. And um, we were stuck in a holding pattern for a really long time. I mean, it, it sort of feels like it's still a new record, but I'm already thinking about what to do next, you know? But we still gotta go tour for it which we haven't done. We've got another like <laughs> year on the road. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to think more than a week and a half in the past or a week and a half in the future. Sometimes it's like, I know what we're doing next. I know what we're doing this weekend. I'm really fucking excited about it. It's a big surprise and I can't fucking wait. But after that, um, I get afraid of looking at our schedule too far in advance. Yeah. Taylor once said, a few albums ago, maybe it's five, six years ago, he said, oh my God, have you seen our schedule? And I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of afraid to look at it. He goes, there's like 75 shows coming up. I said, I know. <laughs> and he goes, that means you have to get drunk 75 times. <laughs> What a tough job, guys. I mean, what a tough gig to have, it's really. No complaints. No complaints. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the lottery on that one, boys. No, that's absolutely excellent. Um, in terms of the songs we hear in the film and everything, you know, we know there's going to be some kind of record coming around this and we're going to get to hear them in a bigger way like that. How do you feel about them integrating their way into the set list and stuff? Because, you know, touring's coming up. Do you feel like that's something you might want to bring into the live show, some of these songs as well? I don't know. We haven't talked about it. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if anybody would really care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, but true. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, shit, man. We like it's we've been so wrapped up in this movie thing for the last few months that we've barely strapped on our instruments. We played a gig the other night and it was like, oh, right. We're a band. Like, yeah. We were talking right. about we got to show this weekend. Like, I, we should probably. Uh. Or rehearse. Yeah. I, right before we <laughs> got on this interview, I was like, are we we should rehearse. <laughs> we should probably get back in. I mean, how did you find that actually? Because I know you guys have played a fair few gigs in the States over the last year and everything, but did you find was it a case of having to blow the cobwebs away a little bit when you kind of first step back into into on stage and into the rehearsal studio? Sometimes. I mean a lot of it's muscle memory. I'm just happy to be not we did a couple of the kind of zoomy. Uh, yeah. streaming shows uh and those aren't easy and so sure. going just going back to playing in front of an audience was it wasn't a lot like blowing off the cobwebs it was just like re relief oh my god an audience yeah. is gonna make it so much yeah. better and easier oh, plus we're not that. really known for our perfection or proficiency so we use that to our advantage often. i disagree dave it's always yeah. very proficient when i've seen you boys live no i'm not having that at all uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> man a um, couple of things I wanted to mention, you know, um, we talk about, you know, the new music in the film and obviously this last record you guys have just done, you know, I know you've been delaying these 25th anniversary celebrations overall, understandably, but it does mean that now you're getting out there on the road a little more. We're coming up 25 years of Colour in the Shape now, which blows my mind, but such a kind of exciting anniversary there, particularly as it was such a crucial record for both of you in a lot of ways around that time. Um, something I always like to ask when it's those big anniversaries is, what stayed the same for you? You know, is there anything you can point to in terms of making that record, which was so important, that still applies now? Anything about that writing process or recording process for you? Well, first of all, wait till you see what we'll do for the hundredth anniversary. You know, free. <laughs> um, That's gonna mind. you know, that was that was the first album we made as a band. Um, the first record was just a demo tape that I had made by myself. So that was mm -hmm. the first time we went to the studio together, and we went in with a producer. 
that was famous for being like a real task master. So we went from kind of making records in our in our more laid back kind of punk rock way <clears throat> to going in and experiencing for the first time a, an actual uh, rock producer that makes you do take after take after take after take after take bar by bar sometimes depending on your skill yeah <laughs> so it was um i think that after that we learned that um we having experienced that we learned to appreciate the opposite side of how to make a record the, the other way to make a record but i mean you know i mean it, it was a really it was a it was a tough time for a lot of us making that album and we made it through and um still play some of those songs to this day you know i mean the song that was written 26 years ago that we go out and play every night and people jump around and sing along to um that's something of an accomplishment i suppose yeah yeah I, th I think it's more than something of an accomplishment for sure guys that's something to be very very proud of right there um and you know i keep mentioning these live shows obviously you are coming back to the uk later this year which we're very very excited about now last time you guys were in the uk which again long time back long time back now because of the nature of the world but we chatted a bit with taylor then and one of the things i asked him was uh, uh about kind of rarely played songs in the set list you know were there any like really rare deep cuts that he'd want to play live a bit more he went with aurora which i think is a good choice and uh, and then he said anything off the self-titled record anything off that first record he just loves being able to get out there and play so same yeah. question to both of you boys putting the hits to a side for a second any deep cuts you'd like to see maybe a little bit more in the set list you know what's crazy today as i was taking the kids to school we all get in the truck i turn on the truck and the first thing on the radio was our version of Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. Oh, wow. Which we recorded at the BBC fucking 25 years oh, ago. Early on, yeah. Um, for like an evening session or something like that. I, I don't remember what it was, but um, I was listening to it and I thought, we should fucking bust that one out again. Great. It's not our song, but yeah. it's something that we did a really long time ago. Dude, it's really hard to pick because, <clears throat> you know, when you go out and make a set list, the, the best feeling when you're playing one of those bigger shows is when the entire venue, whether it's a club or a theater or an arena or a stadium, is joined together in chorus. And we can do that like song after song after song after song because we have so many songs from over the years that everyone likes to sing along to. Um, you have to sort of temper that or pepper that with maybe songs that'll take you on a little bit of a ride. It's just a matter of finding those older songs that are uh, exciting to perform live. You gotta like train, you need to train the crowd to know those songs so that we can play them. So we need to re-release like a deep cuts thing. Right. Yes. Like or, learn these please so we can play them. Right, or um, come up with, I mean, a lot of the songs that never sort of made it big were songs that were almost like experiments in the studio, like songs that we had never played live before recording them and and then didn't pl play them ever again. So it's just a matter of like relearning and making sure that it's something worth standing there for four minutes and watching, you know? Yeah. It's it's, it, it's oh, it's tough. It's always fun though when I see you guys play. I remember when you were in Glasgow a few years back and just suddenly stacked actors open the set and you just go, whoa, that's nice, coming out of absolutely nowhere. Things like that are always a bit of fun. Yep. Yeah, always good stuff. Uh, a few other things I want to mention. So, you know, let me say a lot of kind of the heavier side of what you guys do musically within this film. And uh, as much as I'm loath to say anything about rock is back, because that's bullshit, it's never gone away. Um, it does feel like there's a lot of such exciting, particularly on the heavier side of music. I think of bands like Bring Me The Horizon are bigger than they've ever been, particularly over here. Architects just had a number one album over here last year. Uh, you know, loads of kind of big, big moments, even down to things like Mana Skin and that kind of glam rock thing coming back. Youngblood, who we've supported for ages. I know, Dave, you're a big fan of there. Um, yeah. I'm curious to know what you guys think about the kind of current crop of newer artists. Who are you listening to? Who are you excited about these days? You know, I... I'm really excited about Wet Leg. And I consider them a rock band. I mean, they, you know, they might not detune and wear corpse paint, 
but I mean, I look at them like, oh, they have a bass and a guitar and some drums and there's people singing and, um, but, um, you know, there's always something coming down the, the, uh, down the pike, pipe, which is it? Pike, I think. Pike. Yeah. Or pipe. But that sounds like a toilet. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think that, you know, there's, there's always something coming. It, like, I, you, we have kids and uh, my daughter, she's almost 16 years old. She and all of her friends, I mean, you know, when they listen to music, their, their uh, range of influence now is so wide. It's like she'll listen to The Misfits and then she'll listen to Joni Mitchell and then she'll listen to Slayer and then she'll listen to... Billy Holiday, things like that, and 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 they're all learning instruments and playing. Um, so I look forward to the future of music for sure. But I mean, you cannot, you can't beat seeing a live rock band I, if it's a great band and they're on stage and it's real. Like, oh, Turnstile is really cool too. I like Turnstile. Yeah, well, the whole like that whole post punk thing that's happening over the UK, and Britain is pretty badass yard act and stuff like that. So I, yard act too, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> good and then I'm really into the Viagra boys. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that I just kind of dig. You know? So much. Because I'm so glad you mentioned Turnstile. I think Glowin was maybe my favorite record of last year. It was just absolutely outrageously good album, man. So, so good, dude. Um, yeah, I want to ask you as well, of course, again, talking about live shows, because something I've noticed, I've having seen you guys play quite a few times over the years, um, it's, it's been a really nice development with it. Because I remember the first few albums seeing you guys play, and yeah, it's, it's a band on a stage, and it's really, really exciting. It feels like you're a band leader now dave it's that sort of that's that's that springsteen thing that prince thing of it's like a big show and there's all the covers coming in and let's get people up on Jesus stage and, and, hey, hey i'm Come saying out. it's a compliment Come like out. A way. It's so good. James. look prince is up there prince is up there over everyone i'm just saying there's elements in there it's a nice thing but no you must well, have it noticed. took me a really long time to get comfortable with it i think right. i eventually just surrendered to it and resigned to the fact that like okay i have to be the fucking lead singer go, hey everybody lose your fucking hands like after a while <laughs> you know it's, a, it's a, i think there, there there was there's i was kind of embarrassed at first you know i'd always been behind a drum set playing uh and i could hide behind my hair and hide behind the toms hide behind the cymbals and then to stand there like my weird skinny gangly body trying to play guitar standing up which i'm usually doing sitting on a couch and then, you know, entertaining banter between songs. I don't know. After a while, I was just like, what am I like? What am I trying to be David Bowie? No, that's not going to happen. Just fucking let it go. And that's when it started getting to be really fun. And I think that um, in a way, you know, when we perform, there's this relatability. So the band and the audience, you know, there's not so much a disconnect between the two. I think that we look at the audience and this is actually something that Bruce Springsteen told me once when you look at the audience you should see yourself just as when they look at you they should see themselves and it's that sense of connection or community whatever it is that makes for you know a pretty magical um performance so yeah good advice Bruce I'm that's telling you right great. yeah Isn't that great that guy's going to go far. I think he's got a big yeah. future ahead of him with, you know, tips like that. Uh, final question for you boys. So we've got the horror film. We've had a few documentaries from you in the past. Obviously, lots of comedy in the music videos. What's next? Are we getting the Foo Fighters thriller? Are we getting some intense drama? Crypto. Is it crypto? I'm going yes. NFTs. Oh, I'm saying Jesus Bitcoin, Christ. NFT. Yeah, that's me. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's the next big one, is it? Oh, no. no. I don't know. Ask Lars. Lars is usually one step ahead of the game. I'm telling you. And that is for real. Metallicoin? Probably is a Metallicoin. Lars got a credit. I mean, I like the pun, but that's about I'm it. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's already in the works. <laughs> yeah, you can make that into anything. Um, guys, it's really, really nice chat. <laughs> <So good. laughs> it's, it's a hell of a pun. I'll give you that. It's a very, very good pun. Um, guys, really, really nice to chat to you. Congrats on the film. We'll see you in the UK in the summer. Can't wait for that, all right? See you, James. Thanks.